Hello friends, hello family, hello faith walkers. Welcome to another edition of Christianity with me with your hostess Michi. I thank you all for visiting my Etsy shop and my channel. I thank you all for liking, sharing my channel with others and subscribing to my channel. I just thank you all for all the support you're showing towards me. It is greatly greatly appreciate it. We are still on our Sarasop tea, y'all. Yep, that Sarasop tea is earthy. So I recommend <laughs> I recommend my agave sticks and I recommend my clover honey sticks with this one. And if for those of you new to my channel, new to my videos, these are my agave sticks. And the agave sticks, they're plant-based. And they actually are supposed to help with those that have um, sugar levels that they're trying to maintain. And so you're supposed to be able to use less of this to sweeten. So therefore, it's supposed to be good for people that have diabetes okay and then these are my clover honey sticks they're just honey so yes you can find these on my Etsy shop as well along with my teas that I am featuring and I have for you right here let me show you my sarsa look at that look at how much tea is in that bag you see that mm, that's a thick robust big old bag but that's what the bags of tea my soursop tea that's what it looks like and you can order that as well on my Etsy shop and I also will be featuring soon my womb wellness tea and that's for women haven't featured it yet but this is my womb wellness tea and you can go into my Etsy shop as well and see more about that. My womb wellness. And this is my Sarsop. Okay. All right. So, yes, yes, yes. Go on to my Etsy shop. It's God Sip Tico. That's G O D S I P T E A C O. That's God Sip tea company and to tell you again a little bit about soursop tea it is also called Gaiabano or graviola leaves and herbalists use the soursop fruit and it is a sweet fruit it is a good sweet fruit you can't find the fruit here in the United States you can find it outside but you can find in some shops the pulp of the fruit they sell that but of course it's not as sweet sweet as the fruit is off the tree but um, anyways you can find the pulp in some places and you can also find the leaves or the tea and I like I said you can find the tea on my site but anyways it's used herbalists use soursop the, the leaves as well as the fruit to treat stomach ailments, fever, parasitic infections, hypertension, which is high blood pressure, rheumatism, which is arthritis, and it is also used as a sedative, so for sleeping. Also, what has attracted the most attention lately concerning soursop is there are claims from herbalists that soursop has anti-cancer properties, so a lot of there's a lot of buzz around that because herbalists are claiming that. So that's what soursop is. That's what it is used for. And I am right now promoting soursop because we are about being healthy, spiritually and physically healthy. We want the whole body health experience spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Come on, somebody. And so we are experiencing our teas because God has given us herb to heal our bodies. Herb for healing, y'all. So y'all come on and get that Sarsop tea. Amen. Earthy. <laughs> Anyways, now that we have discussed our tea, 
let's got sip. I want to talk about the word that I believe is a powerful word for this season that we're in for 2021. 2020 was was um, was something within itself when God was uh, demolishing some things, having us examine ourselves and all of that. And so now 2021, I believe that is a it is about reconstruction reconstruction and reconstruction is defined as a thing that has been rebuilt after being damaged or destroyed and that's what we want to look at we want to look at um israel judah the body of christ those that who believe jesus christ is the son of god so we as individuals, we want to examine, you know, we've been examining ourselves, but we want to look at the damage that has been done and the and the things in the body of Christ in, that have been destroyed. And there is a lot that we need to think about because now God is talking about reconstructing. But he wants, when we reconstruct, he wants us to reconstruct things that he established for too long. Um, we have left the things of God. And so we as individuals who are walking by faith, according to the examples that Jesus Christ left, we want to re-implement that. We want to reconstruct the examples of Jesus Christ. Too long we have been following after doctrines of men. And even the Bible talks about doctrines of devils. So we have um, been damaged by some of these doctrines that have been in introduced and that we have taken on as the body of Christ. But I am reminded that when Jesus came on the scene in Matthew chapter 4 to start his ministry, it was all about reconstruction because the church then had gotten off track. They had allowed a lot of different things to come into the churches, to come into the body of Christ. And even as I have been teaching on the seven churches, which I have two churches left that I um, still have to, to do the videos for, and it might happen before I even air this video. But anyways, I have the church at Philadelphia is the next church that I'm going to be introducing. But at any rate, we can see by the seven churches in the book of Revelation that they were already plagued with issues. And that there was doctrine of men already being introduced and doctrine of devils because the Bible talks many a times about them being um, positioned by the seed of Satan and all of that kind of stuff. So that's a real thing. So God wants to rebuild the house of God. He wants to be rebuild the people of God. He wants to build um, Israel. He wants to rebuild Judah. He wants to rebuild the, the believers in Jesus Christ. He wants to be, uh, rebuild build the Gentile nation. God wants to rebuild us because God has always been in the business of people. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And then God said, let's make man in our image and in our likeness. It's always been about people and relationship with people. And so God is, um, when he's rebuilding his house, he's rebuilding the damaged parts. He is rebuilding, um, and tearing down all that false doctrine and the doctrine of men and everything. And because men, just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees, men nowadays, they have the spirit of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and the Herodians. They, the, that's, those spirits are still plaguing the body of Christ. And what has damaged us is the doctrine of men, where men whose hearts have been drawn away by lust, and then they have created doctrines to, to fleece the people, to have the people um, to, to provide for them the things that they wanted, and that became more prevalent than the souls of men. So men got caught up in money prestige, and influence 
with men when that's never been God's reason for establishing his house, for establishing his relationships with man, even in the beginning. But Jesus, when he came on the scene, he came to shift the focus from all of that. He came to bring us back to the father, to bring in, to remind us, to teach us of God's original plan. And God's original plan is what? I've already said it, to have a relationship with man. And when I say have a relationship with man, I'm always talking male, female. Okay. To have a relationship with us. It's all about us, people. It's all about our soul. It's all about God wanting to dwell richly in us, in these earthen vessels. That's what it's all about. It's not about the houses. It's not about the cars. It's not about the, the, the titles. It's not about the positions. It's not about prestige. It's not about you having influence with this one and that one and the other one. It's all about us influencing the world for Christ Jesus' sake. But it's all about Jesus. It's all about the anointed one. It's all about the Christ. And so my scriptural reference tonight, when we're talking about reconstruction, is going to come from Matthew chapter 4, verses 12 through 20. And it reads, Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed into Galilee. And leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is upon the sea coast in the border of Zebulon and Naphtali, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Esaias the prophet, saying, The land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of Gentiles, the people which sat in darkness saw great light, and to them which sat in the region and shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that's still the word today, saints, saints and friends and faith walkers, repentance, turning from our wickedness, having a change of mind. That's what Jesus preached. And that's what his apostles preached in the first church. And that is the preached word for today. Repent. Because we are born in sin and we are shaping in iniquity. Because we have come down through Adam and Adam and Eve, they sinned against God. We are under a curse. And therefore, to get out from under the curse, we need a savior. And Jesus Christ came and he is that savior to bring us out from under under the curse of Adam, which is sin and death. Sin is natural to us. And so now we need a new mind to know how not to live in the flesh, in the natural, but to live in the spirit, but to change, have a change of mind, have a change of heart so that we do not um, live and think and do things that's contrary to God's word. That's what salvation is all about. Repentance. Turning and living a new way. So that's what Jesus began to preach. And 18 says, And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. I want to focus on verse 19 where it says, and he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. I want to deal with the word make tonight. I want to deal with God making us. He said he will make them fishers of men. And make means to form something by putting parts together or combining substances. Construct. There's that word construct again. We're talking about reconstruction, right? Or create. So I'm going to deal with these words I'm dealing with the keyword make, and then I'm dealing with the definition of make to form something by putting parts together. That's number one. And that made me think about joining. Jesus wants to join us to himself. 
That's what the joining is all about. It's about joining us to Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. God wants us to be one spirit with him. He wants us to be joined with him in unity, that we think like him. We act like him, like him. We're an example in the world, just like he was an example in this world. And through the spirit of God, the Holy Ghost of God, empowering us to be those witnesses that God told us to be. He said, I will. He says, you shall be endued with power. That's what he said in Acts chapter two. And you shall be my witnesses. And so we are, we get filled with the Holy Ghost to be witnesses. Christ is the witness in us. And then we can witness to the world. Amen. By the power of the spirit of God. Amen. And so putting parts together, joining, being joined, we will be one with Christ Jesus. Just like this says in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. And that's what we want to be, one spirit with Christ Jesus. The second part of the definition of, of make is combining substances. The substance that Jesus wants to combine us with is faith. And Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. In the New Living Translation, Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So that's what Jesus wants us to be combined with. He wants to combine us with faith that even though we cannot see God, even though we cannot see the new kingdom, the new Jerusalem, even though we can no longer see Christ Jesus physically, but by faith, by faith, we believe, we believe that Jesus is, that God is. And there's a scripture that says, without faith, it is impossible to please him, to please God. So we want to have faith that God is and that God is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. The third part of the definition of make is construct and construct means to build. What is Jesus building? He is building his church. He is building his ecclesia and ecclesia means the called out. We are the called out. He is building a, a, a group of people, pulling them out of the world, calling them out of the world to build and to come together and to form a strong alliance of light so that we can be salt, so that we can impact the world. That's what this is all about. And we're talking about God reconstructing. Amen. And so God is pulling us out. And in order to do that, we have to make have a well-made uh mind. And we have to be willing to live the way that Jesus says live according to what is written in the word of God. And so that brings me to Matthew 16 verses 15 through 18. It says, he says, Jesus said unto them, but who says ye that I am? Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my father, which is in heaven. And 18 says, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. That's building that ecclesia, building the called out. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus came to build his church. He came to build the ecclesia. He came to build a group of people that were going to be called out. They was going to come out of the world, come out of their fleshly life and living and come out of sin and darkness. And they were going to serve him with their whole heart. And that is the same plan for today. God is reconstructing that today. Those that are called out, he is reconstructing in that he is causing our focus to go back to repentance, 
to go back to preaching the gospel of salvation, to go back to water baptism, to get go back to being baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives utterance, and by fire. It is about Jesus. It is about our transformation. It is about us being different and being filled with the Spirit so that we can walk in the Spirit and not fulfill the lusts of our flesh and fourthly create and when we are called out jesus wants to create something and what is that something that he wants to create second corinthians 5 and 17 says therefore if any man be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new That's what God wants to do. That's what Jesus wants to do. He wants to create in us a clean heart. He wants to change our minds. He wants us to be made new creatures. Not a creature of sin, but a creature of righteousness. Saints and friends, faith walkers, the word for this season and now is reconstruction. Will you allow God to reconstruct you? God bless you. Thank you for another edition of Christianity with me. And remember, our tea is Sarasop. Get that Sarasop. Check out my Etsy shop and get that Sarasop. Oh, I'm rhyming now. But you all be blessed in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Good night.